Hey guys, what's happening? I'm your guy, Arrington Gavin. Welcome to the Arrington Gavin Show, your go-to spot for sharp insights, bold opinions, and unfiltered takes on the biggest story of the day. Whether it's politics, sports, pop culture, or the latest buzz, we're diving deep and keeping it real. So do me a favor, kick back, stay informed, and get ready to join the conversation. Ladies and gents, thank you once again, as I mentioned before, to take the time out of your busy schedule to listen in and tune in to the Arrington Gavin show coming to you weeknights available on all digital and streaming platforms. The streaming platforms of YouTube, Rumble, as well as on all podcast platform so wherever you listen to your podcast you can tune into the Arrington Gavin show you can also listen to us Monday through Fridays at 11 p.m. on our radio affiliate WDJY 99.1 FM straight talk out of Dallas Georgia as well as online to WDJYFM.com look my friends so much to unpack with this app within this hour uh, we're going to tap into a lot I'm going to try and get through all of it uh, through this show uh, Diddy yet faces more allegations. I mean, it does not get better for the uh, media mogul, entrepreneur, uh, 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 hip hop star, rapper. I mean, he has so many titles. Uh, Piffy Sean Diddy, I said Piffy, wow, Puffy <laughs> Sean Diddy Combs. Um, yeah, he, he, he it just doesn't get better for his case as you know he was has been charged for uh sex trafficking and racketeering um he's currently still in jail which is seeking a try he's seeking a trial um he's been trying to make bail i believe when he initially was arrested they were trying to seek like a 50 million dollar bail he's selling his homes everything he can and just hold on a lot of cash and the question obviously that everybody's always asking is who else was involved in this quote unquote freak off Diddy parties, right? That's always going to be the inside joke. The fact that they've raided his home, FBI that has raided his home um, in Los Angeles and in uh, uh, Miami, Florida, and they confiscated a thousand gallon sized bottles of baby oil. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that's a lot of baby oil. Like, that's a bit, that's a bit on the weird side um in addition to all of that you know there was a video that had circulated the social media waves between him and then girlfriend cassie uh which shows uh p diddy brutally uh beating her uh in a towel in a hotel hallway and uh obviously that case was settled outside of court but yet no one can ever remove that video from their a timeline. Everybody saw it. it. It's hard to avoid that. Um, also, there have been former employers of Sean Diddy Combs, people that have worked for him that are speaking out. Um, and uh, it's just, again, it's not looking good. So he's facing new allegations from over 100 individuals. Um, also, keeping it within the entertainment field, country star Garth Brooks has also recently been sued for sexual assault now again like both individuals innocent until proven guilty but this is quite out of the ordinary um i'll say for garth brooks who is a fan favorite i'm a huge fan of garth brooks and his music um and just you know he always seemed like the happy go you know happy to be around kind of guys um been married to trisha yearwood who's also a country star and i believe successful uh uh cook um for many years and you just this is just, it seems like this is, you know, this is not happening. Like, what is that? What that can't be true. So, we'll type, type, type. Uh, I cannot get my words out today. We'll tap in a little more um, on that, um, as well as Kim Kardashian. Now, you know, Kim Kardashian uh, has been a huge advocate when it comes to prison reform. Uh, she's helped uh, uh, get early releases from past. Uh, uh, individuals who have been convicted on crimes that really should have been uh minimized anyway um and she's just like you know she's the i guess kind of pursuing her father's footsteps her father who's a, also a former um attorney who was a part of the dream team that represented uh uh represented um oj simpson and so 
we are we are uh, uh, seeing now Kim Kardashian kind of changing the brand a little bit, right? Kim Kardashian was always known as the, you know, obviously born in the money. She had the successful uh, infamous leaked tape between her and uh, Ray J. Uh, she's, you know, reality TV, fashion. Everything was always about, you know, appearance, influence, right? Now she's leaning towards more activism. Uh, she has been very vocal about her thoughts on the Menendez brothers. Now, the Menendez brothers uh, were convicted, I believe, in 90, I want to say in the in the mid to late 90s, uh, maybe, no, maybe longer than that. I'll, I'll, I'll say mid to early 90s, uh, convicted uh, for killing their parents. Yes, brutally murdering their parents. And they have been in jail ever since. They're serving life sentences. And she believes that they should be released. Uh, now they have a there's a new documentary, uh, a new docu series out called Monsters: The Menendez Brothers Story, and it shares the upbringing of the Menendez brothers that led to that crazy evening, um, and then showing them in jail and all that stuff. I highly recommend to check it out. And a lot of people there's debate saying should they have really, you know, been in jail for this long because they've you know, it was a lot of abuse that they went through growing up. Uh, uh, both parents were extremely abusive, um, and and uh, and uh, uh, it was it was like a dictatorship, right? They just they the boys all they had was each other, and so she is uh, pursuing to try and get them released. I don't know how far this will go. I honestly don't really, I don't agree with the release, and I'll share why later on in the program also on today's show country music star luke bryan gives advice to beyonce um who recently was nominated 17 times at the people's choice awards country music awards that was and she left with nothing out of 17 nominations she left with zero okay so we'll hopefully get to impact a little more with that also Chicago mayors are urging President Biden to pardon Jesse Jackson's uh, Jesse Jackson's son, Jesse Jackson Jr. And um, you know he uh, he already served his time, but they're hoping that they can give him a, a you know can pardon him. I, I, that, I'm assuming that will uh, you know be wiped out from his record and hopefully help him for bigger uh, opportunities in his future. So. We'll talk a little more with that. What else do we have on this day slate? We have a few more other things I'll be uh, uh, speaking on in the program. So, uh, uh, so yes, yeah, so I hope you stay uh, with me throughout this hour because we're going to try and impact all of it. Uh, Lord willing, if we have time, a lot goes on within this hour. Uh, but before I move forward, I always have to acknowledge some of our proud supporters of the Aaron to Gavin show, like my friends over at Rugged Evolution Beard Care. Rugged is the new smooth, which they, they are an all-natural men's grooming line that offers 17 scented beard bombs beard oils conditioning shampoo you name it they have it helps your skin very healthy underneath the hair and as well as this you know like see for me i've always rocked a beard and i've realized having all this facial hair i need to have a product that i can help maintain it keep it looking healthy taking care of because fellas here's the thing our facial hair regardless if you have a, a mustache goatee beard is that is the magnet to bacteria and grease. So you always need a great regimen. You need great products to help take care of that beard. And Rugged Evolution Beard Care is the beard care line that you need. So for more information, go ahead and check their website out, www.ruggedevo.com. Again, that's www.ruggedevo.com. Again, I want to thank them for being a proud supporter of the Arrington Gavin Show. My friends, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll have more on the Arrington Gavin Show. So don't go anywhere and do not change that dial. You're listening to the Aaron T. Gavin Show. You know, just like a winning team evolves throughout the season, so does your beard. I'm Arrington Gavin, proud CEO of Rugged Evolution Beard Care. With our premium oils, balms, and grooming tools, it's everything you need to level up your beard game. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a rookie, Rugged Evolution is the new smooth. Order now and dominate the beard game like never before. Rugged Evolution Beard Care, because every beard deserves to be legendary.
What's happening, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the Aaron to Gavin show. Let's get it started with our fun fact of the day. Check this out. So did you know that this is for all you flower heads out there that's into your garden and has a green thumb? This one is for you. Moon flowers actually bloom in response to the moon. Did you know? Did you know? It says here that sunflowers will follow the sun as it moves across the sky, but their lunar counterparts only open after night falls or on a cloudy day. See, you learn something new every day here on the Aaron Together Show because I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I, you know, that's one thing that I struggle with is taking care of my yard. All I know is to keep it cut, make sure I take the weeds out. And uh, first of all, the weeds is my like worst enemy, by the way. What's the point of purchasing weed killer if it never really kills the weed? See, when I have to hear a weed killer, that means all I need is to spray it one time. And then it goes away. Then it goes away. But yet, I keep on getting, I don't know if it's a weed killer I get, but every time I spray weed killer, guess what? It come back. It roses from the dead. Call, maybe call it like weed coma or something, but not weed killer. Because it definitely don't, um, you know, it don't it, it, it don't permanently kill it, in my opinion. All right, let me digress from that uh, before I vent a lot about how I hate weeds and taking care of my yard. Um, <laughs> So, Let's get it going with our first story of the day. So looks like Diddy here is facing new allegations, as I mentioned before in the uh, in the show. Uh, a lawyer representing 120 Diddy accusers, names of rappers' accomplices, will shock you. It's titled. This is uh, reported by Yahoo News. Let me go ahead and play you the soundbite from that attorney that happens to be representing all of these individuals. Uh, it is quite um, uh, again. It is not looking good for uh mr combs uh but again hey innocent until proven guilty but right now it's looking like he's more on the guilty side if it's you know if i might say that's just my opinion but let me go ahead and let you hear listen to the sound bite the biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed to the world the wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us with people claiming people claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. After vetting, we now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs, as well as claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name as defendants as we file these individual cases. And you should know, to the extent the clients feel comfortable, we also intend to make these individuals available to the authorities, specifically to the FBI. And you should also know a few of them have already been spoken to by the FBI. Now, before we discuss the nature of the claims and claimants themselves, let me comment on the large volume of calls we have received since our first announcement. Even before the indictment of Sean Combs, we had received a small volume of calls and it screened a handful of cases. After the indictment of Sean Combs and the announcement that we were pursuing these claims, the floodgates opened. People who wouldn't otherwise for a variety of reasons are now stepping forward to make their voices heard and to pursue justice. But no, most of these people are scared. They fear backlash in their communities. They fear backlash in their own families. They are afraid of retaliation from the perpetrators and their associates. They are rightly afraid for their own personal safety. I expect that through this process, many powerful people will be exposed. Many dirty secrets will be revealed. We know what we are potentially up against. And as is always the case in situations like this, when a celebrity is involved, people can be downright mean and nasty. You would be shocked at the length fans will go, no matter the evidence, to the contrary, to defend celebrities they love. I mean, there's a reason for this word fans. They're fanatics. I've personally already been threatened multiple times on social media. And when I agreed to pursue this, I expected as much. This isn't my first rodeo, but victims who step forward to have their voices heard 
should not be subjected to that kind of conduct. They should not be targeted. I want to say this, and I want to be clear about it. Although we are vetting each call as stringently as we can, I always start with a mindset that I believe victims. I believe victims because I understand the tremendous courage it takes to step forward. So if you're watching this, please hear me. If you're out there and you have been victimized, you are not alone. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed to the world. The wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us with people claiming people claim. So uh, I didn't want to play that full uh, full soundbite, but uh, the gentleman speaking uh, right there uh, was Tony Busby, a Texas based attorney who recently held that press conference claiming that he has uh, that that he has over a hundred people accusing uh, Sean Diddy Combs. Uh, Bigsby alleges that he has over, excuse me, 120 people, uh, both men and women, who have shared their story of sexual assault at the hands of Diddy and other celebrities dating back to 1991. Now, the allegations include violent sexual assault or rape, uh, facilit facil mm, facilitating. Uh, facilitated sex with a controlled substance. Uh, that is. And other uh, 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 sexual abuse uh, of minors. And uh, very graphic video recordings. I mean, the it continues to go on and on now. Recent now, uh, recently, Sean Diddy Combs was arrested on September 16th after a grand jury indicted uh, indictment and is currently being held in a Brooklyn jail. Now, again, we continue to follow up more and more uh, allegations. And the, the hard part is you have people that are truly vic the victims and they could possibly, you know, again, it's innocent or proven guilty. You really don't want to continue to speak ahead, but you've heard the attorney speak. Um, we've seen, uh, a video of Diddy getting violent, striking a female. So again, it's just you have to uh, think of what people are already describing Diddy to be. Right? It's not looking great on his side to you know really defend Diddy because we've seen the acts. We again a a gal a thousand bottles, a thousand gallon sized bottles of baby oil is weird. It's very weird. Um, now, there's been other people speaking on behalf of who other prominent figures are involved in. Now, that's I'm not going to say any names, um, but you you've been, you know, you you guys tune into social media and not saying social media is always accurate. But you uh, uh, you know, other allegations that people have been ma uh, making to other prominent figures. Uh, 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 comedian Cat Williams said in the, you know, in the club Shay Shay. Uh, a podcast episode, you know, hey, look, uh, the truth will come out. I mean, that's why his his uh, clip went so viral because he was coming after everybody. Now, again, I'm a skeptic. I was, on, I was not fully believing everything that Cat Williams was saying. I just, I'm, I'm not too keen of people that uh, uh, gossip loudly like that. To me, it was just, it was just, eh, I thought it was, you know a classless thing to do. I mean, I, I really, I really, you know, handle that stuff private, but don't do it on a podcast, but Hey, that's cat Williams. He's different. I, you know, I could care less. Um, but again, these allegations are very, very serious. Um, this most likely will be one of the longest cases of our time because Diddy is an extremely powerful individual. He's also a very, uh, um, uh, uh, influential person uh ever since the um arrest in brooklyn it's been a pretty odd but like i believe four to five um ceos of major corporations resigned from their position so it's just uh, it's a lot it's a lot man and when you're dealing with uh you know important people um 
it will it, it won't be an easy uh a, a easy case to crack um for these uh you know investigators working the work in this case so we will continue to follow up here on the Arrington gavin show um and uh and see where that see where that information will lead us to uh let me go ahead and digress to our next story uh this one right here i thought was quite interesting because being how crucial this uh this case is uh team not case uh how crucial this election is um you would think that family members especially very close family members i'm talking spouses would watch what they say during elections and i and i and i, and I bring this up guys because recently melania trump the wife of former President Donald Trump. President Donald Trump is uh, the Republican nominee for President of the United States, and um, and she is also from her former First Lady. Uh, she has a new memoir out, uh, sharing everything, everything about her life, everything you know from her upbringing to leading her to becoming a Trump, to leading her to the White House and the whole nine yards. Uh, she recently. Uh, shared her true thoughts on abortion uh she she shared her true thoughts uh uh on abortion um in her memoir and mainly being that she's pro choice that she is that she is pro choice and she's not uh, uh she's not a fan uh, of it here's what <clears throat> some individuals had to uh, say about that. This was their reaction. This is actually Sonny Holston, one of the co-hosts of the very popular um, talk show, The View. Here's what she had to say in regards to just that all this stuff happening with Melania Trump, her memoir, the uh, being a Trump, all this stuff. I think she hates him. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So we can all That's agree on given. that. That's a given. <laughs> I also think that she wants to take him out. She does not want to be the first lady. Anymore. They agree with you. She doesn't want to be the first lady. She destroyed the Rose Garden. Who hates Christmas? Melania Trump hates Christmas. She doesn't want to decorate for Christmas. She doesn't she don't want care. to she doesn't do with care him. About that, yeah. She doesn't want to sleep in the same room with him. She can't tolerate him. Allegedly. And she does. Yeah, how do you know all this? Yeah, I, like, how I do don't you, know. you don't know all this. I say oh, allegedly. She, she, she That's why I say allegedly. So, <laughs> I think she hates him. Yeah. Well, so the uh you know one thing about the view is the view is a very left-leaning uh, uh platform in my in my opinion um they're always been very liberal base uh they do happen to have a one conservative seat there at the table which uh uh in my opinion out of all the years they've had that show their strongest conservative uh that has always been true true to her beliefs is Elizabeth Hasselbeck um, Elizabeth Hasselbeck was by far she you couldn't change her no way she was gonna give you her thoughts did not care um did not care what you had to say um and, and you know I, I'm telling you she was she was much more she was much more pro right leaning than uh uh what's her was uh Megan McCain because and Megan McCain daughter of a uh, former congressman uh john mccain wait was john mccain no i think he was a senator uh oh let me uh let me make sure let me fact check myself before i before y'all <laughs> y'all come after me hold on uh, excuse me former u.s uh senator of arizona uh john mccain uh you know, Megan McCain, she's very, very, uh, uh, very pro conservative, right? She, she, you know, you, she's not a person you can easily sway. Now, this, um, uh, new girl on the program, I believe her name is Alyssa Harris, um, still very, you know, conservative. She was a former, uh, she worked at the, on the Trump administration. She's now an anti Trumper, um, more independent, but right leaning. Uh, but she is in that conservative seat. I say all that to say the view has always been pro-left, pro-left, pro-left. It's literally, especially during the Trump years, it's a Trump bashing show. Um, 
I've always uh eh, wasn't wasn't always didn't really care too much about uh about the show that much. Um, you know, they is it just it got boring to me, and especially it's very hard to last like long running shows. You have to change it up. I mean, they changed the set, um, but if you have Whoopi, you got Joy, you got Sunny, always just bashing, 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 bashing the right. I like it when it's a little more you know balanced in my opinion. But anyway, Sunny Holston shared her thoughts on um on Melania Trump's feelings towards. Uh, uh, towards Donald Trump. Now, here's a uh, article uh, reported by The Hill. It says here that Trump on Melania's abortion rights comment, he quotes, you have to stick with your heart. Now, it says here that former President Trump said in an interview that he told Melania Trump that she's got to write what you believe regarding her apparent pro-choice stance on abortion in her memoir that's set to release uh, in a few short weeks. Um, it says here that um, he quote and I quote it. We spoke about it, and I said you have to write what you believe. I'm not going to tell what you to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You have to write what you believe. Trump told Fox uh, News Channel Bill uh, Bill Mulligan, uh, Mulligan, excuse me, in an interview uh, that aired recently. It says here she's very beloved, uh, but I said you have a stick with you have to stick with your heart. I've said that to everybody, you have to go with your heart. Um, the former first lady released a video um, expressing her support for abortion rights and teasing her forthcoming memoir in which she uh, reportedly describes being a passionate supporter of a woman's rights to control her own body. Now, I say this, guys, because what this election Women's reproductive rights is at the ballot box. It is it is one thing that conservatives really, and what I mean by conservative, is something that Republicans do not have a response to answer for. Uh it's um it's one of the most biggest uh uh, uh ammunitions uh that the Democrats have is when they bring up uh women's reproductive rights, women, you know, rights to choose. Um and I wonder if this will affect her husband's campaign and, and chances, because you have to look at the the all around uh, uh, Republican Party as a whole. Would that would that uh, 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 would that cause more division within the Republican Party? Because best believe, though, there's there's division in the Republican Party. As I mentioned many times here on this program, you have the MAGA movement or the MAGA party, then you have the Republican party. You have a lot of key Republican conservatives that has left the Republican party or is either still considered Republican, but not endorsing Donald Trump. I just read, uh, before I started the show, uh, former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, she's going to be hitting the campaign trail rallying with Kamala Harris, Liz Cheney, the daughter of Dick Cheney, who also is endorsing, uh, Kamala Harris. There's been so many. I feel like every new article is oh, Republican endorsing Kamala Harris. There's a well-known Republican endorsing Kamala Harris. Another Republican endorsing Kamala Harris. There's there's literally a whole squad of people Republicans for Harris. All right. So and this has been going on not just for Harris. It's been going on uh, just in my opinion during the Trump era when Biden ran for office for president of the United States. You had the creation of the Lincoln Project, which which consisted in a lot of Republican uh, individuals that were anti-Trump uh, uh, people, anti-Trumpers. Uh, so you have a huge division within the Republican Party. Does this uh, stance that uh, form, uh, former First Lady Melania Trump uh, has on the abortion rights, does this add does this cause more division within the party and will that affect uh, Trump's campaign? Now, in my opinion, Trump's campaign is on a high right now after uh, uh, J.D. Vance, after the vice presidential debate between Ohio Senator J.D. Vance and Minnesota Governor uh, Tim Waltz. Um, J.D. Vance accomplished. He, he, you know, he kicked it out the park. Uh, it was a it was a one of those fair, like reasonable debates. It wasn't a lot of bashing back and forth, but it was a very good, calm, uh, you know, again, passionate debate between the two. 
but JD Vance did leave there victorious. And so that being said, it had boosted, in my opinion, uh, the Trump campaign just slightly, just slightly. Uh, and then on top of that, hey, you never know what the future holds for JD Vance as far as running for office. You just you just don't know. Um, so again, that was uh, a recent story that I wanted to mention with you all. Uh, and um, and hey, leave a comment at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can uh, DM me, give me your thoughts uh, on you know what's your take on the uh on the abortion issue uh that's at that's on the uh on the ballot box what's your take on it um was melania uh is melania hurting her husband's chances of running for re-election does she hurt uh, or cause more division within the republican party or does it have any effect at all like i'm curious to, let me know what you think about that guys um let's see here how are we doing on time doing pretty good all righty, here's what we're going to do. We are going to uh, do a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more here on the Aaron T. Gavin Show. Don't go anywhere. Do not change that dial. You are listening again to the Arrington Gavin Show. Welcome back, my friends. Welcome back to the Aaron Gavin Show. As I mentioned earlier in the program, uh, country music star Garth Brooks, huge fan of this guy, Garth Brooks, um, recently was is being sued by a former makeup artist, allegedly rape and sexual assault case. It's reported by People Magazine, um, and it states that um, obviously Brooke, uh, Brooks previously denied the claims in a complaint filed under the John Doe with the intentions of blocking her allegations from going public per complaint. Now it says here that the hairstylist uh, says here that the hairstylist and makeup artist who worked for Garth Brooks have filed a lawsuit against the country icon accusing him of sexual assault and battery. Now the plaintiff filed the complaint as John Doe, as John Doe in California state court, uh, recently, according to documents obtained by people, uh, Brooks previously denied the claims in a complaint filed under the John Doe with intentions of blocking her allegations from going public per complaint. Now, in the complaint, Roe alleges Brooks, who's 62 years old, raped her, exposed her, exposed his genitals and buttocks, uh, spoke openly about sex and related fantasies, changed clothes in her presence, and sent sexual explicit texts, text messages with each incident taking place throughout 2019. Now, it's quoted, it says here, for those last two months, I have been hassled to no end with threats, lies, and tragic tales of what my future would be if I did not write a check for many millions of dollars, Brooks claimed in a statement. It has been the face. Uh, he also adds hush money, no matter how much of, or how little is still hush money. In my mind, that means I am admitting to behavior. I am uh, incapable of ugly acts. No human should ever do to another. Uh, the statement continues. We filed uh, a suit against this person nearly a month ago to speak out against extortion and defamation of character. We filed in anonymous anonymously for the sake of of the families on both sides. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, that right there, my friends, that don't sound like a guilty man to me. My man said, "Oh no, uh, even paying hush money is hush money to me. I'm not paying nothing because that's gonna no. We're not doing it. We're fighting this." And I, again, innocent to proven guilty. I don't know who's telling the truth. I don't know who's lying. But the and it was it's interesting because I was watching um television not too long ago and it was. A conversation between two very successful 
uh, journalists and one of them who had been in the past accused um, and uh, and is you know obviously he's still on TV. He was it it, it did hinder his uh, his career at that period. He was he was gone for a significant time and then came back and now he's back doing what he's doing. And he just said, you don't realize, you know, what allegations can do to families, right? knowing that you're innocent and people just all they can do is just for you know for greed and money so i bring all that to say guys it's both sides on this there's the truth and then there's someone not telling the truth uh this will be an ongoing conversation ongoing story uh this was recently brought up uh on the uh outlets uh news air, uh, news airwaves as well as uh as well as on um on print and so Again, Garth Brooks is, it's just, it's, 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 it's an abnormal thing to, uh, to hear his name being mentioned in the same sentence as like allegations of sexual assault. Like it's just, it, it, it does. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm, I'm not sugarcoating anything. It's Garth Brooks. Like, and, uh. It's it's just it's it's a sad case. Um, again, uh, I hope uh, I hope justice will be served for you know in in this case. But um, we will continue to follow up more uh, here on the program about this because this is very 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 shocking news, especially for you know fans of 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 Garth Brooks. And so um, yeah, it's it's a lot. Uh, let me go ahead and digress from this from this story. And I want to uh, bring up this next one uh, with country music star Luke Bryan providing some advice for a queen be herself, Beyonce. Again, she's coming off of a um, eh, uh, not a not too happy uh, uh, night uh, when she was she was nominated for 17, 17 awards at the People's Choice Country Music Awards. Uh, 17 and left with absolutely nothing, which is very rare for Beyonce. I feel like Beyonce is always leaving home with something, you know, at least three at the minimum. But zero out of 17? Ooh, yikes. That, get, look, that's when that girl started creating that cognac. She said, oh, I, I need a drink after this. I need a drink. So let me go ahead and play you the soundbite that country star Luke Bryan had to say in regards to Beyonce making the crossover to country music. I'm all for everybody coming in and making country albums and all that. Yeah. But just by declaring that um, just because she made one doesn't mean that I don't need just because I make one. I don't I don't get any nominations. A right, lot of. Right. I mean, a lot a, a lot of great music is somehow sometimes does, overlooked. A lot of yeah. great music's overlooked. Sometimes you don't get nominated. Sometimes yeah. um, um, it. So I like said i mean i think the cma they have their voting body yeah. and they they vote what they think yeah should make it everybody loved that beyonce made a country album yeah, yeah. nobody's mad about it yeah but yeah. where things get a little tricky and and you know if you're gonna make country albums come into our world and be country with us a little bit uh-huh like don't like Beyonce can do it exactly what she wants. Yeah, to. Of she she's yeah. probably yes. the biggest star in music. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. come to an award show and high five us. Yeah, and yeah, have yeah, fun yeah. and get in the family too. I'm all for everybody coming in and making country albums and all that. Yeah, but so so I under I understood with uh with uh. Luke Bryan was saying, I, I really, I really, really, really understood what he was saying. Um, I said it from the get go when Beyonce first said she was coming out with a country album. Um, I was, I mean, I was all in for it. Right. I, I, I think all artists should do crossovers to different genres. I mean, hell, that's what they, well, that's why they're called artists, music artists. They're not, again, Beyonce is not an individual that we will say R and B star, Beyonce pop star, Beyonce, country music star, Beyonce, no. The girl is called her. 
she is Beyonce. She is sometimes she's just B, and you already know who you be talking about. You know what I'm saying? It's Beyonce. You don't say nothing ahead of that. You say Beyonce or Miss Carter. All right. You know exactly who the hell you're talking about. Now, Luke Bryan, not trying to, you know, uh, uh, pick on him or anything. Luke Bryan's a country singer and country only. That's his that's his realm. That's his avenue. That's his that's his his genre. He he and he he chooses to stay. Now he can obviously cross over to any genre he wants to, but he chooses to stay in country. That's the moneymaker for him. That's where his success re- relies on country music. All right. Now I understand where he's coming from because again, he's a true, he's a country artist. Now, Beyonce, I wouldn't consider being saying she's a true country artist. Now, look, she's a Texas girl. It don't get any more country than that. She's from Texas, Houston, Texas. So she is a country girl, nonstop. Um, but I get it. I get it. I do think, though, the genre was a little harsh on her, especially in the beginning stages, because even the fan base was like, stay in your lane. What well, you know about country music and all that? You know, people being bitter because they have this successful, literally the Michael Jordan of music, you know, coming to a genre that they're expecting that was going to dominate. I think they were, to me, I feel like they were trying to make an example out of her saying, hey, look, with seven, because where the hell do you ever come across people that's been nominated for 17 times in one award show and not leaving with an award? Like, not leaving with a award? Are you kidding me? Like, 17 and you don't even leave with a get a gift bag? Like, <laughs> Give me a break. You know, you know somebody higher up that said, let's make an example out of her. She thinks she can just come on in our music and just take our awards. We not having that. So they don't give it to her. They don't give it to her. You had winners that came up on the stage that thanked her, acknowledged her. Post Malone, again, new to country, but he won. Uh you had Shabuzi again. You wouldn't know really who Shabuzi was if it wasn't for Beyonce, in my opinion, because he was on her album. Now, he'd probably been doing music for a long time, and, and he's a very successful artist, but he had to get that push from a certain person, and that person was Beyonce. So that push really beefed up his country music career, which really he's out, you know, he, he's outside the country music realm as well. Um, It will be an ongoing conversation. Uh, do you think Beyonce should stay in country for a little longer? Do you think she should do another country album? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Uh, please let us know. Let us know. DM us. Leave us a comment. I'll make a a a, a video clip about this on our uh, social media page. So let me know what your take is and your thoughts on that uh, uh that convo. Um, let's see. Let's see how we look with time. Look, we're gonna do another commercial break when we come back we have our final two stories of the show don't go anywhere my friends you are listening to the errington gavin show Welcome back, people. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Arrington Gavin Show. I am your guy, your host, Arrington Gavin. Look, uh, recently, as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, Kim Kardashian is on the advocacy advocacy train to release people that she believes faced a very harsh uh, uh, case, a very harsh sentence, and is trying to get people former convicted felons, their freedom back, all right? People that she believes is really innocent. Um, 
So Kim Kardashian went to go visit the Menendez brothers um, not too long ago and is coming across with this mindset that, you know what? They should be free. She wants them to earn that, get their freedom. Now, the Menendez brothers uh, was uh, two brothers lived in a very wealthy uh, neighborhood in, I believe it was uh, California. And um, they, their upbringing was very, very sad, might I say. Uh, very abusive parents, physically, mentally. Uh, uh, the, their father allegedly had, a, well, not allegedly, um, well, it's, it's said in the story, I'll say this, it's, it's been said in the story, uh, check out the Monsters, Menendez Brothers, it's a docuseries currently on Netflix right now, uh, that the father was sexually abusing the kids, also, um, uh, 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 uh beating them, abusing them, it just really, really took a toll on their body, and took a toll on their minds, and so the Menendez Brothers, happened to uh, murder their parents, brutally murdered both parents. Um, and so they've been serving a life sentence uh, since, really, since 96. Uh, uh, yes, because they were convicted in 1996. The, the uh, murder occurred in 89, um, but they were convicted in 96 uh let's see here um and so uh this article is reported by variety it says here that kim kardashian demands menendez brothers to be freed uh and she quotes we owe it to those little boys who lost their childhoods um says here after visiting eric and lama and in prison kim kardashian has penned an essay uh demanding the menendez brothers to be free after their convicted of killing their parents in 96 is quoted in, in, and i quote we are all products of our experiences they shaped who we were who we are and who we will be uh physiologically and psychologically uh time changes us and i doubt anyone would claim to be the same person they were at 18 i know i'm not Kardashian wrote in an essay for NBC News recently. I'll be honest. If you would have said people change from the age they were at 13, maybe even 15, than they are now, 18 years old, you do make you you make better choices every, I feel like every year, right? Every year. But choices that you make at 18. You made those choices. Now you, can, we're always trying to uh, not go back. We're always trying to move forward. And I and I hear Kim. She's really she has a heart for these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, two men. Which they're they're grown men now. They're well, I think in their late fifties, early sixties. Um, no one can fathom the abuse that they receive. Again, I'm I'm saying this, witnessing the the docu series that uh, uh that's on Netflix right now. They were very, they were abused. They were, they were really abused. And a lot of people were saying, hey, look, they're innocent. They, they took out victims. I mean, they took out uh, people that they thought that would literally kill them. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't say it was self-defense because they, they caught their, you know, woke their parents up, caught them off guard, and then boom, took them out. That's how the film, that's how the docuseries uh, replicates it um we just we you know we we would never know we you would never say okay the self-defense because they they committed a crime kim they committed a crime um everybody's gonna it's gonna have both sides of it they're gonna a lot of people are gonna say no they gotta stay in jail because they did the time it's sad to what happened to them but they gotta serve the time it's some saying look they were spoiled brats uh they wanted the money and all and all the fame uh, you know, they, they committed crimes besides this. I mean, they committed robbery. They were doing every, you know, they were doing other crimes outside of just this very serious one that they committed. So again, when you have a mindset like that, you just, you don't know what's what, who to believe really. Um, 
as I continue, and then I'll have our last story before we end this program. She continued saying, you think you know the story of Lau and Eric Menendez? I certainly thought I did in 1989. The brothers at the age of 21 and 18, respectively, viciously shot and killed their parents in their Beverly Hills home in 1996. After two trials, they were sentenced to life in prison without the poss possibility of parole. As is often the case, this story is much more complex than it appears on the excuse me, then it appears on the surface. Both brothers said they had been sexually, physically, and emotionally abused for years by their parents, according to Lyle. The abuse started when he was just six years old. And Eric said he was raped by his father for more than a decade. Wow. Uh, following years of abuse and real fear for their lives, Eric and Lyle chose what they thought at the time was their only way out and unimag unimaginable, un uh, unimaginable way to escape their live living uh, nightmare. Now, a lot of people have said, why couldn't they just run away? Why couldn't they just run away? It's you have to see the story and we'll talk a little more about this on the show later on. Um, but it's a very, very, it's a sad case. It's a very scary and sad case. Uh, but read up on it for those who are unfamiliar with the story about the Menendez brothers and, uh, and check it out, check it out. Uh, I'm looking at my time. I want to move it on real quick to this last story. Cause I know I'm not, um, uh, my time is looking very short here. Uh, Recently, Chicago mayors asked President Biden if they could pardon the son of civil rights activist Jesse Jackson. I think I might have spelled that um spelled his first name wrong here on this uh, uh screen here. I've said Jesse Jackson Jr., but it's Jesse Jackson Jr., who is a former uh a former congressman. And uh, they're asking if they could, if, if the uh, president could pardon uh, Mr. Jackson. And this is reported by Black Enterprise. Let me read this real quick. It says here, Chicago mayors urged Biden to grant presidential pardon to Jesse Jackson Jr. Uh, it says here that nine Chicago mayors came together earlier in the month to pen a letter to President Joe Biden requesting a pardon for the uh, former representative Jesse Jackson Jr. The namesake of the iconic civil rights leader, who was recognized at the last month's uh, Democratic National Convention, was convicted of conspir conspiring to use campaign funds for personal purposes more than a decade ago. After serving about half of his 30-month sentence and being released to a halfway house in March of 2015, the Chicago political leaders... Hold up, guys. Have a little... My, having a little difficulties with my with my tablet. There we go. Before I'm a, how am I looking with my time? Ah, uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, it says here that Chicago leaders think think Jesse Jackson Jr. deserves a second chance. Uh, and it's it says here, and I quote. We worked with him on a regular basis. His concern and care for the constituents' need, needs were always present. Uh, the mayors of South Chicago suburbs wrote in part, uh, like you, we also make decisions that affect people in their everyday life. Oftentimes, we must reflect upon never judging a man based on the worst day. Uh, we believe that Congressman Jesse, uh, excuse me, Congressman ja Jackson has better days ahead. Uh, it says here in the NBC report, the letter follows Jesse Jackson Jr.'s 2013 guilty plea for conspir conspiring with his then wife, Sandy Jackson, uh, to misuse $750,000 in campaign funds for personal expenses. This isn't the first instance of elected officials containing Biden, contacting Biden about uh, Jackson Jr. situation. Notable Jackson Jr. successor, Representative Robin Kelly, who's a Democrat uh, in the congressional, I think the third congressional district, um, has encouraged that pres President, well, not third congressional district, but 
uh, encouraged the president in recent years to utilize his pardon power to aid the former lawmaker. Uh, Jesse Jackson's father, uh, Rep Reverend Jesse Jackson, 82, has also requested pardons of his son. Um, let's see here. The father and son has also worked together to request pardons for other convicted government officials like uh, former governor of Illinois, Rob Blagojevich. And I don't know what's going on with my iPad, guys, but it keeps on going blank. And then it pops up with my notes. I tell you, I love technology, right? Uh, Rob Blagojevich in 2019. Jesus. In 2019. The Jacksons urged then President Donald Trump to pardon Rob Blagojevich for his corruption crime, saying his 14-year prison sentence was unfair and unnecessary. <clears throat> now, personally, I look at it like this. If you commit a crime, you what? You got to do the time. If you commit a crime, you have to do the time. Look. I understand if they're saying, well, Jesse was really uh, he was doing so much good for his uh, for his constituents and for his community. I understand that. But guess what? He also looked out for his personal gang and not, you know, not only for his people, but he looked out for his personal gang the illegal way. Keyword illegal. If you break the law, you break the law, in my opinion. Um, you know, what what message are we sending out? For those who, you know, he just basically, hey, uh, can you take it off his record? He did his time. Now, look, let's let's go in a new state because let's go on a, a better slate for them. Because what they're saying is if you erase that now, he'll have maybe stronger chances of running again to gang. It's all about, you know, the parties are always about getting that personal gang and um, and doing what's best for their uh, for their party. And that's how I look at it. But. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I always see things like, hey, look, come on, let's wipe this off his record. Help us out here. We got these, you know, bigger elections. We try and get the, the, you know, trying to get Congress back and, you know, the Democrats are trying to win back the Congress and the, the House and all that other stuff. So, it, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't like the whole politicians. Again, political corruption. I don't like them uh, 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 using campaign funds, people with hard-earned money that they donate to get you elected and now you're going to start splurging on yourself. I don't like that mess, man. I, I really don't like it. Uh, but I, as I digress, I'm losing, um, running out of time, y'all. Look, be sure to tune into the Aaron T. Gavin Show weeknights at 11 p.m. on WDJY 99.1 FM Straight Talk, as well as on all podcast 